of England, and now we take you into the magical woods of Athens, where anything can happen. And knowing this particular group of campers, it probably will. <laughs> when we started this process uh, 22 days, 21 days ago, it was my great pleasure to get to know 10 of your campers very well. And I'm, it's my pleasure to lead them on this journey through the woods. But in truth, they really led me with the help of my wonderful assistant directors, Sierra and Mark. This show couldn't have come together without the two of them. They helped with fights. They helped with donkey ears. They helped with music. And they helped with, spoiler alert, a parachute. <laughs> Thanks to their hard work and their tireless enthusiasm, we have a wonderful show to present you. Um, it has really been such a pleasure to get to know your campers in this time together. When we first started, I invited them to think of this time together as an opportunity for less talk and more monkey. <laughs> and holy crap, these guys brought a lot of monkey. <laughs> so without further ado, I invite you in to the magical world of Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream. <laughs> Follow you. 
Oh no, my love. Why is your cheek so pale? No chance that the rose is there to fade so fast. Like for want of rain, which I could well between them in the tempest of mine eyes. I mean, for all that I could ever read or hear by the tale of history, the course of true love never did run smooth. If then true lovers have been ever crossed, it stands as an edict in destiny. Then let us teach our trial patience, because it is a customary cross, as due to love as thoughts and dreams and sighs, wishes and tears, poor fancies followers. A good persuasion. Therefore hear me, Mary. I have a widow named, a dowager from Athens is her house for about seven leagues. There, gentle Hermia, may I marry thee. Steal forth thy father's house tomorrow night, and in the lead, and in the woods, a lead without the town. There will I stay for thee. My good Lysander, I swear to thee by Cupid's strongest foe, by all the vows that ever men have broken, number more than ever women spoke. In that same place thou hast appointed me. Tomorrow truly will I meet with thee. Keep promise, love. Look, here comes Helena. Not so be fair Helena, whither away? Call you me fair, that fair again I say. Demetrius loves your fair. Happy fair, or oh, fair soul. Girls would I catch fair Hermia at her go. Teach me how you look, and with what art you sway the motion of Demetrius's heart. I frown upon him, yet he loves me still. Oh, that your frowns would teach my smile such skill. The more I hate, the more he follows me. The more I love, the more he hateth me. His folly, Helena, is no fault of mine. None but your beauty would that fault were mine. Take comfort. He no more shall see my face. My standard and myself will fly this place. Helen, to you our minds we will unfold. Tomorrow night, when Phoebe doth behold her silver visage and watery glass, decking the liquid pearl of lady grass, the time that true lovers' flight stuff conceal through Athens' gates that we devise to steal. And thence from Athens turn away our eyes to see new friends and stranger companies. Farewell, sweet Plato. Pray thou for us. And good luck grant thee thy Demetrius. Keep word, Lysander, we must starve our sight from lover's food till morrow deep midnight. I will, my friend. Helen, adieu. It's you on him, Demetrius, though it's on you. How happy some or other son can be! Through Athens I am thought as fair as she. But what of that? Demetrius thinks not so. He will not know what all that he do know. Love looks not with the eyes, but with the mind. Therefore is winged Cupid painted blind. For ere Demetrius looked on Hermia's eye, he held down oaths that he was only mine. I will go tell him of fair Hermia's plight. Then to the wood will he tomorrow night pursue her. And if I have thanks, it is a dear expense. But hearing me an eye to enrich my pain, to have his sight thither and back again. <laughs> Call me generally man by man, and so grow to <laughs> Here's a scroll of every man's name, which is thought fit through all Athens to play in our interlude before the Duke and Duchess on his wedding day at night. <laughs> oh, first Peter Quince, say we'll play treats on, then read the names of the actors. Mary, our play is the most lamentable comedy oh. and the most cruel <laughs> death of Pyramus and Thisbe. Oh. Oh.
slow study. You may do it at step right, for it is nothing but roaring. But let me play the lion's who I will roar! It will do any man's heart good to hear me. And you should do it too terribly. You would frighten the duchess and the ladies that they would shriek, and that were enough to hang us all. <clears throat> but I will aggravate my voice, so I will roar you as gently as a sucking dove. I will roar you to her any nightingale. <sighs> you will <laughs> no part to the But they do square that all their elves for fear creep into acorn cups and hide them there. Either I mistake thy shaken making quite, or else thou art that shrewd and knavish sprite called Robin Goodfellow. Are not you he that frights the maidens of the villagery? Those that hobgoblin call you and sweet puck, you do their work and they shall have good luck. Are not you he? Thou speakest aright. I am that merry wonder of the night. But Brute Fairy, here comes over on. And here my mistress would that he were gone. Ill may find me. What jealous Oberon, fairy skip hence I forsworn his bed and company. Tarry, rash wanton, am I not thy lord? Then I must be thy lady. Why art thou here? Come from the farthest step of India, but that forsooth the bouncing Amazon and your buskin mistress, your warrior love. To Theseus must be wedded, and you come to give their bed joy and prosperity. How canst thou not be ashamed, Tanya? Glance in my credit, Hippolyta, knowing I know thy love to Theseus. These are the forgeries of jealousy. And never since the middle summer spring met we on hill, in dale, forest, or mead to dance our ringlets to the whistling wind. But with thy brawls thou hast disturbed our spirit. Therefore, the winds piping to us in vain that in revenge have sucked up from the sea contagious fogs which falling in the land have every pelting river made so proud that they have overborne their continents. And thorough this distemperature we see the seasons alter and the nascent world by their increase. Now knows not which is which. And this same progeny of evils comes from our debate, from our dissension. We are their parents and original. Do you amend it then? It lies in you. Why should Titania cross her over on? I do but beg a little changeling boy to be my henchman. Set your heart at rest. Fairyland was not the child of me. His mother was a votress of my order, and in the spice Indian air by night. How often hath she gossiped by my side and sat with me on Neptune's yellow sands? Marking the embarked traders on the flood. When we have laughed to see the sails conceive, 
and grow big bellied with the wanton winds, which she with pretty and swimming gait following her womb, then rich with my young squire, would imitate and sail upon the land to fetch me trifles and return again as from the voyage rich with merchandise. But she, the immortal of that boy, did die. For her sake do I rear her boy, and for her sake I will not part with him. How long within this wedding day you stay? Perchance till after Theseus' wedding day. If you will patiently dance now round and see our moonlight revels, go with us. If not, I will spare you your haunts. Give me that boy, and I will go with thee. Not for thy fairy kingdom. Fairies away, we shall try that right by longer stay. Well, go thy way. Thou shalt not promise grow till I torment thee for this injury. My gentle puck, come hither. Thou rememberest since once I sat upon a, prom upon a promontory to hear the sea maid's music? I remember. That very time I saw that thou couldst not. Cupid all armed, a certain aim he took. And a fair vestal thrown it by the west. But I might see young Cupid's fiery shaft quenched in the chaste beams of the watery moon. But marked I where the bolts of Cupid fell. It fell upon a little western flower. Bring me that flower, the herb I showed you once. The juice of it on sleeping eyelids laid will make old man or woman mad that dote upon the next live creature that it sees. I'll put a girl round about the earth in forty minutes. Having once this juice, I'll watch the tiny while she is asleep and drop the liquid in her eyes. The next thing then she waking looks upon, be it lion, bear, or wolf or wolf, she will pursue it madly with the soul of love. But who comes here? I'm invisible. I love her here, their conference. I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Where is Lysander and fair Hermia? Thou told me they were stolen unto this wood. Hence, get thee gone and follow me no more. You draw me hard, hearted Ephedra. <laughs> do I entice you? Do I speak you fair? Or rather, do I not in plainest truth tell you I do not? Nor I cannot love you. And even for that, do I love you the more. I am your spaniel, and Demetrius, the more you beat me, I will fawn on you. Use me but as your spaniel, give me leave, unworthy as I am, to follow you. Tempt not too much the hatred of my spirit, for I am sick when I do look on thee. And I am sick when I look not on you. I'll run from thee and hide me the bricks, leave me to the mercy of the wild beast. The wildest hath not such a heart as you. Run when you will, the story shall be changed. Apollo flies, and that can hold the will not say thy questions, let me go. Or if thou follow me, do not believe, but I shall do thee mischief in the wood. Aye, in the temple, in the town, the field, you do me mischief. Fie, Demetrius, you are wrong to such a scandal on my sex. We cannot fight for love as men may do. We should be food and we're not made to food. I'll follow thee and make a heaven of a hell to die upon the hand I love so well. Fare thee well, then. He shall not from this grove. He, you shall fly him, and he shall seek thy love. Hast thou the flower here? Welcome, wanderer. Aye, there it is. I pray thee, give it me. I know a bank where the wild thyme blows, where ox lips and the budding violets grow. There Titania sleeps some time of night, lulled in these flowers and dances in the light. With the juice of this, I'll streak her eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. But take thou some of it and seek this grove. There, a sweet Athenian lady is in love with a disdainful youth. Drop the liquor in his eyes, but do it that the next thing he espies might be the lady. Thou shalt know him from the Athenian garments he hath on. <laughs> but look thou meet me ere the first cock crow. Fear not, my lord, your servant shall do so. Come now, a roundel and a fairy song, then to your offices and let me sleep.
what thou seest when thou dost wake, do it for thy true love take. Love and languish for his sake. In thy eye that shall appear, when thou wakest, it is thy dear. Wake when some vile thing is near. <laughs> Fair love, you fain with wandering in the wood. Speak short that forgot our way. Don't <laughs> <laughs> well, rest us, Hermia, if you think it good, and tarry for the comfort of the day. Be it so, Lysander, find you on a bed, for I upon this bank will rest my head. One turn preserves a pillow for responsible. <laughs> one heart, one bed, bosoms. <laughs> <laughs> Nay, good Lysander, for my sake, my dear, lie further off yet, do not lie so near. I mean. <laughs> so my heart unto yours is knit. So that only one heart can we make of it, and by your side no bedroom we deny. For mm, well, I am so hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot lie. Lysander riddles very prettily, but gentle friend, love and courtesy, fly further off in human modesty. So far be distant. And good night! <laughs> 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 love never altered till thy sweet life end. Amen, amen to that fair prayer, say I. And in life, when I am loyalty. Here's my bed. Sleep. Give the elders rest. With half that wish, the wisher's eyes be pressed. Through the forest have I gone, but a thief yet found I none, on whose eyes I might have proved this flower's force and stern love. Night and Who is here? Weeds of agony, doth wear it. This is he, my master said, despised the Athenian maid. Churl, upon the eyes I throw, all the power this charm doth go. When thou wakest, let love forbid, sleep and seat on I fly island. So awake when I am gone, for I must now to Oberon. Stay, go thou kill me, sweet to me. Stay on my peril, I alone will go. Oh, I am out of breath in this fond chase. The more my prayer, the lesser is my grace. Happy is her meow, where so she lies, for she hath blessed and attractive eyes. No, no, I am as ugly as a bear, for beasts that made me run away for fear. Therefore, in a marvel, though Demetrius draws a monster fly in my presence thus. But who is here? Lysander on the ground? Dead or asleep? I see no blood, no wound. Lysander, if you look, good sir, awake. And run through fire, alive, for thy sweet sake. <laughs> Where's Demetrius? Oh, how fit a word is that vile name to perish on my sword? Do not say so, Lysander, say not so. What though he love you, Hermia, Lord, what though? Yet Hermia still loves you, then be content. Content with Hermia? If you repent, the tedious man with her I have spent. Love? Not Hermia, for Helena I love, who would not change a raven for a dove. Wherefore was I to this keen mockery born? When at your hands did I deserve such scorn? Good troth you do me wrong, good sooth you do. In such a stainful manner, me to woo. But fare you well. Perforce I must confess, I thought you lord of more true gentleness. Oh, that a lady of one man refused should therefore of another be abused. She sees not Hermia. Hermia, sleep thou there, never mayst thou come, my Sander, near. Go in my powers, address her love and might, to honor him, and to be her knight. Help me, my Sander, help me, do my best to love this. Pity what a dream was here. Lysander, look how can you quake with fear? Lysander, what removed? Lysander, Lord! What out of hearing gone? No sound, no word. No, and I will perceive you all not nigh. Their death or you I'll find immediately. <laughs> Are we all met? Comedy of Pyramus and Thisbe that will never please. First, Pyramus must draw a sword to kill himself, which the ladies cannot abide. How much? Squire, lady, a parlous fear. I believe we must leave the killing out when all is done. Oh, not a wit! Write me a prologue. Then you know the prologue seem to say that we will do no harm with our swords, and that Pyramus is not killed indeed. And for the more better assurance, write that I, Pyramus, am not Pyramus, but the bottom of the weaver. That would put them out of fear. Well, we will have such a prologue. Will not the ladies be appear in the lion? I fear it. Oh, I promise you. Oh, therefore, another prologue must tell that he is not the lion. Nay! Name his name and half his face must be seen to the lion's neck, and he himself is 
speaking through saying thus, or to the same effect, ladies or uh, fair ladies, if you think I come hither as a lion, it were a pity of my life. No, I am no such thing. I am a man as other men are. <laughs> And there let him name his name and tell them plainly he is not the joiner. Well, it shall be so, but there is two hard things, that is, to bring moonlight to a chamber, for, you know, Primus and this be made by moonlight. We'll leave case when the great chamber window where we play open, and the moon may shine in that piece. Aye, or else one must come in with a lanthorn and bush of thorns and say he comes to disfigure or to present the person of moonshine. Then there is another thing. You must have a great wall in the chamber for Primus and Thisbe says the story to talk through the chink of a wall. You can never bring in a wall. What do you want? Ah, ha! We have a man or other presents wall. And he uh, will have some loam or rough castle plaster down and hold up his fingers thus. And through the cranny shall be miss and this be that may be even all as well. Come, sit down, every mother's son, and rehearse your parts. Pyramus, you begin. When you have spoken your speech, enter to that break, and so everyone according to his cue. What heaven? Hope's ones have to be swaggering here so near the cradle of our fairy queen. <laughs> what a play toward? I'll be an auditor, and after two, perhaps, if I see cause. Uh, speak, Pyramus, this be stand forth. The flowers of odious savor sweet. Odors, odors. Odors savor sweet, so half thy breath, my dearest this be dear. But hark, a voice. Stay thou by here a while. By and by I will see thee appear. A stranger here oh. is an air here. Must I speak now? I very must, for you must understand when he goes but to see a voice that he heard, and is to come again. Most radiant pyramus, most Lily white <laughs> of a uh, color like red rose on tri triumphant briar, a uh, most brisky juvenile and eek most lovely Jew, uh, as true as the truest horse that yet would never tire. I'll make the pyramids at Nitty's tomb. Nine is two, men. Why you must not speak that yet? That you answer to pyramids. You speak all your part at once, cues and all. Here, Miss Enter! Your cue is passed. It is never tired. Oh! <laughs> as true as true as horse that yet would never tire. If I were fair, <laughs> as the only guide! Oh, monstrous! Oh, strange! We are haunted! Great masters, body masters, Because 
kind and courteous to this gentleman. Hawk in his walks and gamble in his eyes, and feed him with apples and dewberries, not to mouths and do him courtesies. Hail, mortal! Hail! 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 Hail. Oh, I cry your worship's mercy, hardly I like beseech your worship's name. Cobweb. Good Master Cobweb, I shall desire you more acquaintance. If I cut my finger, I will make both my hearts. Your king, honest gentlemen, peace bless. I pray you, commend me to Mistress Squash, your mother, and Master Peacock, your father. I shall desire you more acquaintance. In your name, sir, I beseech you. Mustard seed. Good Master Mustard seed, I shall know your patience well. Oh, in your name, host, wait upon him. Lead him to my bower. The moon, we think, looks with watery eye, and when she weeps, weeps every little flower of the menting sun, and force of chastity. Yeah. Tie up my love's tongue and bring him silently. <laughs> Captain of 
a fairy band, Helena is here at hand, and the youth mistook by me, pleading for a lover's fee. Shall we their fond pageant see? Lord, what fools these mortals be? <sighs> Stand aside, the noise they make will cause Demetrius to awake. Then will two at once move one that must needs be scored alone. <laughs> Why should you think that I should rule in scorn? Scorn and derision never come in tears. Look, when I put out, well, I weep and bow so born in their activity. All truth appears. You do advance your cunning more and more. When truth kills truth, oh, devilish holy fray, these vows are Hermes, will you give her or wait oath with oath and she will nothing way? I have no judgment into her, I swore. Nor none in my mind that I can give her more. Demetrius loves her, and he loves not you. Oh, Helena. <laughs> She hath 
merged her height <laughs> with her personage. Her tall personage. <laughs> her height. <laughs> she had prevailed with him. And are you grown so high in his esteem? Because I am so dwarfish and so low. How low am I, thou painted maple? Speak! How low am I? I am not yet so low, but that my nails can reach into thine eyes! Oh, <laughs> Standing haste, make no delay. We may affect this business yet our day.
on the ground, sleep sound, all apply to your eye, gentle lover's remedy. When thou wakest, thou takest true delight in the sight of thy former lady's eye. Jack shall have Jill, not shall go ill, the man shall have his mare again, and all shall be well. Um, sit thee down upon this flower bed, while I, thy amiable cheek, do point, stick musk roses in thy sleep smooth head, and kiss thy fair large ears, my gentle joy. <laughs> Where's Peas Blossom? Ready. Scratch my head, Peas Blossom. Where's Mr. Your cobweb? Ready. Is your cobweb good? Is your give me your weapon in your hand and kill me? A red hit humblebee on top of a thistle, and could Monsieur bring me a tiny back? Where's Mr. Mustard Seed? What is your will? Nothing. But how cavalier must cobweb to scratch? Oh, I must be a barber. She only thinks I grow marvelous hairy about thy face. Say, as we love what thou desirest to eat. A peck of provender. I could munch your good dry oats. <laughs> Methinks I desire a bottle of hay. Good hay. Sweet hay hath no fellow. I have a venturous fairy that shall seek the squirrel's hoard and fetch thee new nuts. I'd rather a handful of dry peas. Oh, I pray you, let none of your people stir me. I have an expedition of great sleep come upon me. Sleep thou, and I will wind thee in my arms. Fairies be gone, and be always away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how I love thee, how I dote on thee. <laughs> Welcome, Robin. Seest thou the sweet sight? Her dotage now I do begin to pity, for, meeting her of late behind the wood, seeking sweet favors from this hateful fool, I did upbraid her and fall out with her, and, having once my pleasure, torment her, till she in mild terms did beg my patience. Then I asked of her a changeling child, which straight she gave me, and sent her to fairy to bear him to my bower in fairyland. And now that I have the boy, I will undo this hateful imperfection from her eyes. Be as thou was wont to be, see as thou was wont to see. Wake you, Titania, wake you, my sweet queen. Oh, my Oberon! What visions have I seen? We thought I was enamored of an ass. There lies your love. <laughs> how came these things to pass? Oh, how mine eyes do loathe his visage now. Silence, wild. Go and take off the head. Titania, use it, call it. Let us strike more dead and come and sleep of all these fine scents. Music, ho, oh, music such as charmeth sleep. Now, when thou wakes, with thy own cool eyes, <laughs> music sound. Come, my queen, take hand with me, and let us rock the ground where all these sleepers be. Solemnly dance in Duke Theseus' house triumphantly. And blessed all to fair prosperity, there these pairs of faithful lovers shall be wedded with Theseus, all in jealousy. Fair king, attend and mark, I do hear the morning mark. Then, my queen, in silence sad, twip we after the night shade. We the globe can compass soon, swifter than the wandering moon. Come, my lord, and in our flight tell me how it came this night that I sleeping here was found with these mortals on the ground. <laughs> <laughs>
and here in our intent came here in great solemnity. Good. But speak, Aegeus, is not this the day that Hermia should give the answer of her choice? It is, my lord. <laughs> Good morrow, friends, and Valentine is past. Begin these woodbirds but to couple now. Pardon, my lord. I pray you all stand up. I know you two are rival enemies. How come this gentle concord in the world? I shall answer thee amazingly, my lord. Half sleeping, half waking. For as I swear I did come here with Hermia hither, our intent was to be gone from Athens, where we might without the peril of the Athenian law. Enough, enough! My lord, you have enough! I beg the law, the law of punishment! My lord, fair Helen told me of their self, and I in theory hither followed them, fair Helena, in fancy following me. But my good lord, I want not by with power, but by some power it is. My love to Hermia melted as the snow, it seems to me now with the remembrance of an idol god. And all the faith, the virtue of my heart, the object and the pleasure of mine eyes, only Helena. Fair lovers, you are fortunately met. Of this discourse we more will hear anon. Aegeus, I will overbear your will. For in the temple by and by with us, these couples shall eternally be knit. Away with us to Athens, three and three. We'll hold a feast in great solemnity. Come, Hippolyta. Tedious and brief, 
that is hot ice and wondrous strange snow. And we will hear it. Go, bring them in, and take your places, ladies. I love not to see wretchedness or charge. What, gentle sweet, you shall see no such thing. Uh, let him approach. <laughs> I think you're a man. 
on the part of their fathers. We can please you, sir. See that vlogger here, a burger master, and a tour company. No, I have long, I pray you for your plane needs no excuse. But to have your burger master, let your epilogue alone. Thank you. 